All right, so here we've got the two newest motors to the collection. Uh, they are both 6.0s. They're both motors that I technically got in like trade deals and sales, and they both have supposed spun bearings. This one right here, you can notice it's kind of empty. No heads, no pistons, no rods, but the crankshaft is completely frozen in the block. So we're gonna flip this one over, get that crank out, see what's going on. This one's a whole lot more complete. Uh, it's very dirty. This was actually out of some guy's work truck. It supposedly spun a bearing. I sold him a motor, he gave me this one, but this one does spin. And if it spins, it wins. So as soon as we get the crank out of this one, we'll throw this one on that stand, flip it over, see what we find. And then uh, I will probably be selling both of these. I don't need another 6.0 block. I've got the red motor. That's more than enough six liter for me. So yeah, let's go ahead and flip this guy over. So motor's flipped over now. You can see here that this rod journal is in fact spun. So this guy's totally fried, but uh, I'm interested to see which main is the one that's bad. So what I wanna do first is get my Chrysler puller and then get the crank pulley off. So this is something that I tell to anyone who works on LSs in any capacity. What you need to do is go to O'Reilly and go order a brand new Evertough 67005. You can rent this tool, but what you can do is just go to the counter and tell them to just order you a new one, pay for it like you would like it was a rental, and then just never return it. Uh, you know, because if you're going to be paying for it, get a new one, you know, don't use the rental one. And basically how it works is you've got your three jaws, your uh, bolt here, and then the longest, for the truck pulley at least, the longest pin slides in here, goes like this, and then come around here. It grabs perfectly onto the three little thingies that are out, then just get it, make it nice and tight, and then grab your socket and just start cranking. You see we got some movement. Just like that. Extremely easy. So the guy I got this motor from told me that it was supposedly a built motor. He bought it, uh, it was in a V8 swapped Colorado and he was racing it at Irwindale. Uh, it had absolutely no gauges whatsoever. All the wiring is a total mess. And he was on the return road idling and then the motor just froze. So he didn't even check the oil, check anything. So yeah, I'm interested to see how uh, rough this thing looks like. But yeah, definitely change your oil and at least check your oil. All the main bolts are out. Um, whoever took it apart originally was kind enough to uh, remove all the back bolts for the uh, back cover. So we got that out as well. It's out. And then, so the crank is still frozen. So now it's just about knocking out all these main caps and you know, seeing which one is the one holding this crank in. All right, cap one. No spin. Oh, cap two. The bearing stayed with the crank. Let's see, does it spin? That one's, can't tell if it's spun or not, but it's, uh, it's with the crankshaft, so that might be the one. Number three, you see the bearing stayed with the cap. And still no spin. Yep, see, stayed with it. And last one. Yep, bearing stayed with it. Okay, see if it spins. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, <laughs> so that's definitely a bad main bearing. Let's see what it looks like, what the actual crank looks like. Oh yeah, here we go. So we have to get some light in here, but here, hold on, let me grab a light. So yeah, as you can see, the bearing that sits in the block has rotated up here. So yeah, spun main of the second main. So let's now let's lift the crank out and let's get that bearing piece out. The crank journal actually looks okay. There comes the crank. Block. So yeah, that one actually looks pretty okay. There's a little shaving of it. But uh, yeah, because these bearings are very, very thick. So poten And this is, this is cast iron. So yeah, potentially this block should be like totally solid, like not need like a line hone and whatever else. 
just needs a new coat of white paint. All right, so just looking at the crank here. So yeah, obviously the uh, this rod journal is pretty fried, and but the main actually seems pretty okay, and you really can't even feel a difference between all the other mains. Uh, it's pretty common knowledge though that the 5.3, 5.7, 6.0, and 6.2 have all of the exact same 1255, 2216 crankshaft. The only difference is that they're technically weighted differently from the factory because the, all the pistons are a different size. So this thing's not really worth anything anyway. But this thing looks pretty much ready to go. I'll probably just, you know, clean it up. And uh, yeah, if anybody's interested in this block, definitely contact me, you know, DM me, DM me on Instagram or just comment. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and throw this thing down and then get that, that one ready up and ready to go. So the last thing I wanna do uh, before we put this motor away is weigh it. So uh, back there, I've got my beloved uh, all aluminum 5.7 original LS1 block. That was weighed in an old video. I think it weighed 95 pounds on the scale. Uh, if I have a clip, I'll put that in. Ninety-five pounds for the bare block. Yeah, look at that. No problem. But uh, the iron block should be about exactly a hundred pounds heavier. So I'll figure that out right now. Let's just rack this up. What do we got? So one ninety-six, exactly a hundred pounds. So that one was like ninety-five, ninety-six, one ninety-six. So yes, the iron block LSs are exactly 100 pounds heavier than the aluminum ones, which is why I'm such a freak about all my aluminum blocks. So the dirty marshmallow sitting over there. Now we've got the grease ball racked up. So this is exactly how I took delivery of it. Uh, super dirty. Um, a couple of the uh, valley bolts were missing. Uh, all the plugs were in it, which was interesting. And then the oil pan's missing, and which now the uh, pickup tube is destroyed. So I figured before I flip it over and start looking at bearings, I want to you know do a inspection of how often this oil was actually changed. All right, pretty burnt, but not that sludgy inside. Yeah, not very sludgy. Yeah, not as bad as some of the motors we've pulled in the uh, in the yard. So let's grab the other one. So I can tell that both of these valve covers have been off because uh, oh well that one's not. That, this this uh, gasket's brand new, and then all of these grommets are new, and then it looks like these bolts were degreased. But, yeah, look in here too. It's not sludgy, it's very dirty, but yeah, definitely not sludgy. And it's also, you notice, you notice how much cleaner this is than the C5 one was? Yeah. So, yeah, you can see how uh, 200, I think, 80,000 mile trucks compared to even high mileage worked Corvettes, these things are always worse. Right. Okay, so now let's just flip it over. Actually, you know what, before that, I wanna pull the plugs out. Plugs are all out, they look old. Uh, I don't know if they're original, but they're definitely, actually yeah, these are definitely not original, but they've definitely got some miles on them. But yeah, so under closer inspection, so this cover is new. You see it's not a US one. Uh, the rear main seal cover is also new, and then for whatever reason, somebody did this, uh, this valve cover gasket, and I guess not this one, but this one was off anyway. But yeah, that's enough looking up here. Now let's flip it over and uh, Look at the carnage underneath. So we got the uh, anchors off for the pickup tube. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at this gasket here. So that's a common point which LSs lose oil pressure. So potentially this, if this just falls apart, then we know maybe that's why it lost oil pressure and then supposedly spun bearings. But yeah, see it's old and flat, but it doesn't look like it failed. Like one of the ones we pulled out literally fell apart. And it was like, oh, I wonder why that, that could have been what sent it to the junkyard because it had, you know, no oil pressure. All right, we'll just try coming off. Let's see what we can see. All right, that seems okay. Seems okay. Yep, seems okay. And seems okay. So yeah, I was told this engine had a spun bearing. Uh, I was noticing it, you know, as we were tearing it apart, there's really no glitter in the oil. And um, yeah, really no um, like evidence of a spun bearing. However, the guy said, he said it was making a bunch of noise and that's why it was pulled, that's why it was swapped. So I really don't feel like putting it together and test firing it and hearing for a noise myself. Uh, I figure we might as well, I guess, just flip it over, maybe pull heads and see if we can find anything. Uh, if we don't find anything, I guess it was just a good engine that got tore down. So let's, yeah, let's flip it back over. All right, rocker's coming out. 
And the other thing too is that, so uh, the guy I got this from, in his truck is now one of the engines we pulled. And he said that the new engine, which is just a junkyard engine, feels like a completely different engine. Like, so this thing clearly has something wrong with it. It was super down on power and making some sort of noise. So I feel way better just completely tearing it down than just throwing gaskets. You know, say we put it on there, it didn't make a noise, and then we put gaskets that set it on its way. No, it's a way better, better idea to just tear it down completely. Let's see if she comes off. <laughs> it can't be wet. All right, it looks good from what I can see. It's lots of dirt. Looks okay. It smells awful. Yeah, that's the other thing too is that this engine definitely smells like burnt oil. We do not have smell of vision <laughs> Yeah, between the white motor with that white marshmallow and this thing, both total burned oil. But yeah, so like I said, all the, uh, all those pistons look good. Here, let's look at the kind of piston chamber. Yep, so you see here, looks like all the valve seats are in where they're supposed to be. No piece of anything, so. If anybody wants some 317 heads, we got them. All right, let's see if we find the smoking gun. This other thing too, we keep getting blasted with the smell of uh, burnt oil. You know, we do a lot of junkyard engines. They always smell dirty and grimy, but they never smell this burnt, so. It's burning my nose. Oh, I don't see anything. Yeah, every piston looks good. So, I guess we could technically start pulling pistons, but there's really no point because, you know, everything looks good. I don't know what that noise was. Maybe it's a lifter. Actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's pull the lifters out and let's check the lifters uh, and see if it was just a lifter failure. Yanking the lifters now. It's technically not a bad thing that we tore the motor this far down because if we do find a bad lifter, obviously you have to pull the heads off to get to the lifters and ALSs anyway. So let's see. Yeah, of course, none of them were still held in by the plastic. You know, when these things are new, they'll actually lift the lifters right out because they'll stay in their trays. But these things are obviously so fried that they're never gonna hold them in. So fish out each one. All right, one seems okay. Good, good. Good, still no smoking gun. Good. Oh, actually, um, there's a tiny bit of markings on that wheel. Not really now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all 16 lifters out, still no smoking gun. So, potentially a cam bearing noise, potentially in the front cover. I guess we can pull that off now too, see if there's anything going on with that. But other than that, I really can't find anything wrong other than it's just burnt oil and it's supposedly down on power. I figure I might as well pull the uh, valley pan, but also these are 13 millimeter bolts and this is an 04. So that means it is an 04 and a half with the uh, superior floating wrist pins. So that's pretty cool. More burnt. Yeah, normally this is like nice and slimy inside, not all like chalky and black. We've decided to pull the front cover and everything off. Uh, I've got a flex plate bolted up, and then I've got my uh, favorite ICT billet tool, the flywheel locker. I showed it in another video, but it's that much easier to show it when the motor's fully upside down. So this goes where the starter does, locks the uh, flywheel so that we can get the crank bolt off, and then we're gonna pull this pulley off just like the other one. Yeah, just like the other one. Line it up. Get it to hook on. There's that pop. Yeah, so it's literally so easy. I'm using a 3 8 like not even using a half inch. That's how easy, that's how well this tool works. Mm. There she comes. And yeah, really no, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. That's right, it's locked, we can't spit it anymore, but 
Yeah, so I think we're actually done here. Um, I don't want to take it any part any further because it is a totally complete short block. Uh, I'm going to talk to the guy I got this from and see maybe, you know, what was that noise and exactly how down on power it was. But yeah, definitely, if you're interested in this engine, I might tear it down more later. Might, you know, it's a good builder candidate or in the Dirty Marshall over there. Definitely comment, send me an email. I might put my email in the uh, description and, uh, or just, you know, find me on Instagram. That's probably the best place to find me. And uh, yeah, so I think we're done for now.